So, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much to the organizers, to Krista and Stella, for organizing this conference. I think it's an extremely important uh, topic for many reasons. Not just because, of course, we all have high aspirations that uh, the golden age is coming, finally, media art with all these digital devices in every pocket is making us rich. Uh, finally, maybe we are accepted by the establishment of the art market by the galleries, by the museums. I think it's also very important or maybe even more important because it has very much to do with the very definition of what we are doing, of what media art is, what the expectations of media art are and what the expectations towards media art are. And of course, again, the ongoing question, what should be the role of artists working in this uh, super dynamic field of new technologies, a field that is, as we all know, totally, at least meanwhile, dominated by commercial interests, not at least talking about all the issues of military industry, surveillance industry, and all this kind of thing. So I think probably without big discussion, everybody would agree that uh, subversion going against the stream, looking at the things that are behind is one of the foremost roles of artists working in this field. But then again, how can this be connected? How can this be harmonized with producing beautiful pieces, producing pieces that are so easy to handle on the technical side that you could convince a collector or a museum to invest money in it without immediately getting afraid that a few years after the acquisition, the only thing that is left is a dead machine, a dead computer, or even more complicated, self-made, special purpose technology. I think this is really a huge range, and when we discuss this relationship between the media art and the art market, then I think it is really foremost a discussion and a consideration about what media art is. And of course, this is a point where we have no chance to make any meaningful conclusion. I was actually uh, starting yesterday to collect uh, photos uh, of uh, different types of video art, uh, of uh, uh, media art from video to interactive to all the network stuff and what we are doing right now. But after I had about four gigabyte of photos on my memory stick, I recognized it's totally hopeless. I will not be able to kind of give an overview of what I think is the very strength of media art, which I think is its extreme variety and diversity. There is barely another artistic form of working in this time that has so many very different directions, whether it's the difference and the diversity in the artistic forms of expression or the technologies, the tools, the material that is employed, or as well the areas where it is applied, where it is made for. From art in the net to art in the public space, all these areas from the super virtual and ephemeral to the real physical activities with societies and communities, all these areas are covered by media artists as well, of course, as by other artists. So I think one of the very big things when we talk about media art and the art market, first of all, we would have to, of course, think about what kind of media art are we talking about. Is it even conceivable that media art in its totality could end up in museums? I mean, the thing with sun and moon is one of the, of course, profound issues, but in the totality of the problems that we are facing. It's probably the most easiest one because uh, windows we can close, but there are many more things that are even more difficult. A very important Austrian media artist, Robert Adrian X, who passed away last year, he made this, for me, always very important sentence. He said, the finished piece of art is a matter of the past. And so I think besides the problem with light, sunlight, and uh, the darkness that our screens and projectors need, we have, of course, this very defining element of media art that it's a process. And even if, as an artist, you produce a finished piece of work because you say, as an artist, stop, this is my piece, that's it. 
then you still have this very nature that everything that is based on electricity, not even digital data, but already with electricity, is always a constant process. It's never finished. It always needs energy. It always has motion. It always has circuits. And even more, of course, so with all the digital areas. So, of course, we see many successful examples nowadays of artists and artworks from these different areas of media art, starting with video art, going into more uh, digital art, uh, interactive installations, ending up in collections, in private collections, ending up in museums as part of their collections. But nevertheless, even if this is a very promising development, we have to see that this is, after all, always just a very small, or maybe it's large, I don't uh, want to uh, kind of mix this up with small and large in terms of importance. So it is a very specific, let's call it like this, a very specific segment of the whole range of media art production and creation of our times. And I have to say, uh, in all the many years that I'm working in this field as an artist, as a director of Ars Electronica Center, I have grown a kind of very skeptical, almost allergic re first reaction to this idea of the market, because I really grew up with this kind of critical approach always that was brought against media art. You know, why are you not collected by artists, why, uh, by collectors? Why are you not part of the art market with your art? It was always pointed out like it would be kind of mistake. Something is wrong with your media art because you're always doing this on strange places. You have to go to old factories, you go to warehouses, you go to wherever, but you know, why aren't you in the museums? Why do you make, don't you make money with selling your things? And if you are exposed to this for you know, many, many years, of course, you develop this kind of allergic reaction. And then, uh, of course, in my position with uh, some responsibility about what us Electronica is doing, you start to think of uh, this issue of market and the way how artists are able to make a living in many different directions. I don't want to go within the frame of this uh, symposium and my short presentation into this area where I think, at least at the moment, the largest and most important market for media art is taking place because it's unfortunately outside of art. So it doesn't fit into the scope of the symposium. But when we look just at the sheer quantity, most of the people who are successfully able to make a living from being a digital artist, a media artist, the art and technology expert, make their money outside of the, let's say, traditional, conventional institutions and areas of art. They collaborate in the field of design. They became co-workers for startups. They are consultants of uh, big companies and industries in this very big endeavor of our present time to get in terms with the development of the digital society. I don't know whether this is acceptable as a role, a function of art in our society, but I think nevertheless it would be going way beyond the scope of uh, what should be discussed here. The second point here is looking at the market and this kind of you know, uh, eagerness of many artists uh, to finally end up in the art market, which is of course totally clear because that seems to be the only area where really the money is that we all desperately need, is of course again to think of what kind of market. For me a very important example that I stressed often in, in discussions about this topic is you know, why the hell does this very small segment of the art market because when you really look at the whole cultural market and the business, then the galleries, those places that are collecting art and putting it on walls or in beautiful rooms, is actually not uh, the most important one. There are much, uh, many more others and in totally it's just a segment. So why is this area so almost kind of arrogant and pretending that finally the media art should 
turn a little bit and produce pieces and works that can end up in this segment. Nobody would ever, you know, just have the idea or dare to ask a poet who is writing for theater and say, you know, hey guy, why are you not collected in museums? Why don't, you know, the big galleries and the big uh, art fairs, why don't they show your art of work? Nobody would ever dare to ask this a composer. And there are many other areas as well. What I mean with this is that we, of course, have to make a much clearer differentiation that when we have these many different types of media art, then, of course, we have many different types of art market. Of course, the gallery-based market is a very important one. But then again, when we look at, like I can do now at the last 20 years or even a little bit longer, there has been a very well-established market for media art, also inside an art system. I mean, there is this huge amount of festivals. Still, of course, many of them are very grassroots. And even if I look at the famous Ars Electronica, 37 years you know, of uh, existence and work, and still we have only 30% of the budget that, for example, a Steirische Herbst gets. And nobody finds this kind of strange. Well, I don't know why. It's, of course, because I think we are still, after all, in a quite uh, young area. And uh, there is still much more time that uh, has to pass and that we have to fight and work to kind of really end up in this sort of establishment that our activities are seen as equally worse also in terms of money that uh, should be contributed to this than in the so to say traditional conventional regular art market. But this whole ecosystem of festivals, from the very small ones that are organized by special interests group or universities or communities, to the big ones, international ones like ICEA or of course also Ars Electronica. But in the last five to 10 years, it has been really a kind of explosion of activities and areas. And this of course is a market. I know many, many media artists who are able to make a living. I don't talk about, you know, how well off they are. And we all know, no matter what kind of art we are looking at, the percentage of those who can really make a comfortable, good living, or even become rich, I mean, is super, super, super small. So uh, the situation of media art is completely the same as for any other art form, cultural production, or artistic work that we have so far. But there is a market, and I think uh, it is also a market where we should maybe in the frame, in the context of this symposium, also use this as an example or as a start, starting point to think about what kind of mechanisms, what kind of knowledge, expertise, and what kind of experts are necessary. For many, many years, and I think up until now, for many people, the most, the strongest argument against media art ending up in collections and museums is, of course, its technical instability. All the difficulties. You know you purchase a computer and not a piece of art. You know you purchase some hand-wired electronics and some screens and projectors and not a piece of art. The problem, of course, everybody is afraid of how long will it last, how long will it work, how long will it function. But then again, look at other art forms. We have for almost every art form, the only reason why we are still able to see the paintings and the sculptures of hundreds or even more years ago. Why we are still able to listen to the music of uh, not only Mozart and, and the likes, but even longer before. Why we are able to enjoy the place of Shakespeare is because we as society invest a huge amount of money and effort in training generations by generations of highly skilled experts who are able to restore and reproduce the works of art of our history, whether it's the people who are restoring the paintings in churches, in museums, or even more when we think at music and theater. And I think we are more and more recognizing that no matter, you know, if we as people from the art area need this, or if we are really taken in account in this equation, but we are, of course, as a society now developing already these generations of experts. Every database that is containing our fin 
our financial records that is containing the billions of photos and, and uh, data that are collected at Google or whatsoever. All this have the same problem that we have in VidyArc. It's the problem of how can we preserve and bring the original or the spirit or whatsoever, but how can we bring it into the future? And I think this is one of the very big uh, developments that we really have to take in account. So I would really recommend to have a very high self-esteem. We are at the verge of a situation where I think no matter how technically complicated or unstable the piece of art is that is being produced right now, there is a very good chance that in 20 years, in 50 years, in 100 years, there will be the experts, as we have it right now, for other art forms to take care of the cultural heritage of our times. So thank you very much again for putting together this very, not only interesting, but important conference. And I'm looking forward to lots of insights. Thank you very much.